Hello and welcome to this episode of Digitally. We're going to unpeel a really important topic, which is metaverse. Many of you have asked for it, and I thought that I'd bring in a colleague uh, that I think you'll enjoy speaking to and hearing from, and that is Brajesh Cha. Now, Brajesh is a fellow IITN. He's an avid traveler. He's a deep foodie like me, and we get along on so many other dimensions. But the key thing here is he also looks after the media and entertainment industry vertical for us here at Genpack. He's a colleague of mine, and he spent a lot of time, particularly in that industry, thinking through metaverse. And so with all of that, Prajesh, welcome. Thank you so much, Sanjay. I'm glad to be here. Well, it's and, great to uh, have you here. And listen, Prajesh, I wanna land this topic very quickly, and I wanna get down to the heart of the matter. The reason I picked you is because I wanted to pick media and entertainment. And the reason I picked media and entertainment is nowhere else is metaverse so obvious, so here, and so now. And so just to get us started, tell us what's the state of play for the metaverse in your vertical? You know, uh, for the longest time, if you were to speak to a media company and ask them, who's your biggest competitor, they would name another media company. But what has happened today is the leading players are calling Fortnite and Roblox as competition. Because what has happened is these companies have brought social media, gaming, and entertainment, all of this together. And, and they're offering the first glimpse of what the metaverse is going to be for mass population going forward. So this, so this convergence you're talking about, about social media, we're familiar with that, with gaming, many of us are in there, and with entertainment, it's all converging at one point, isn't it? And as it converges, Give us ex examples of how companies are leveraging the metaverse to further that play. Yeah, so essentially, if you think about what happened with social media, it, it empowered people to express themselves. And the traditional media consumption was a one-way street. Studios created content and people consumed them. Yes, there was disruption from linear television to over the top and so on, but that was not the level where people get a chance to express themselves in ways where user-generated content mixes in with studio-produced content, IP content. And that's where, when companies talk about the Disney verses of the world or when uh, Warner Music announces its theme park in, in the metaverse, what they're essentially talking about is creating those moments where consumers are allowed to interact with their favorite characters and that whole experience leads to a whole bunch of digital relationships and commercialization at a scale that no one had ever predicted. That's, that's the state of play right now. And that's what everyone is gearing towards. Okay, so you've, you've said a few different things, right? Clearly, all, actually also unsaid in all this is that technology has come a long ways. We've got the cloud, we've got 5G, we've got all of the VR, AR capabilities, and all of those things together provide a very immersive experience. You've also talked about the convergence of um, the three aspects of entertainment, social, and gaming. You've talked a little bit about the creator economy because you're basically saying it's, uh, it's that's kind of fielding a whole new horizon of things. But then these forces are somehow converging to a point where this is starting to explode, it's starting to become really big. We, you talked about a couple of examples. Help us bring that to life. And how big is Disney worse or how big is you know, some of the gaming examples used can, compared to what I would have thought about in terms of linear television or any other example. Just give me, give me some, give me some sense for, is this on the margins or is this mainstream now? So just to give you a sense, when pandemic hit us, streaming became the center of the entertainment universe. And the amount of investment that went into fresh content in one year of 2020 alone, we were talking about over 60 billion in investment. And after that, we are talking about nearly 220 billion of investment into fresh content. Now the power of that fresh content is such that if you take in, into account the top gun coming in with 120 million on the very first opening day, now imagine if a child is looking to have a virtual party for their you know, friends on their birthday and they do it in, in the metaverse and the guests include someone who is a Top Gun character. That is a reality today. Those are the kind of possibilities that exist and the kind of commercialization that it can lead to. Uh, it's, it's at a different level. 
And I'll give you another very simple example of a couple in India, um, they could not get together uh, physically to get married. They actually conducted their marriage in the metaverse. They spent barely $2,500 and they had guests and family members from all over the world with their virtual avatars that they had bought pieces of uh, clothes for their virtual avatars and all of them were there in person and some of them were in the metaverse. So this bridging of human experience from the real world to the virtual world, which is infused with your favorite characters, which the media world has been very good at creating. That is that inflection of um, IP, commercialization, blockchain-based, open, deregulated Web3, and, and all of the joys of self-expression that goes with it. That's the, 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 the intermixing of all of that is what is making it such, such a phenomenal experience for everyone. You know, you had it, you had me when you basically said um, a wedding on the metaverse. That's almost unbelievable. I, I can't wait to get to, go to one of those parties, but, but I can certainly imagine, you know, having Tom Cruise join one of the birthday parties on the metaverse or, you know, I, I, it really does bring to life some interesting um, um experiences and thoughts that I don't think I, I, um, I had given some um, as much thinking to. And that's amazing if that's where the play is right now, if that's actually happening. Um, there's also the talk about, and I think you said this, about connecting the physical universe with the metaverse. And I've, you know, we have, we have, we know of, we know of companies out there where you can sort of go in and design your own shirt or your own jacket or your own fabric, and then actually own the, uh, own that as a design, as an NFT, and then actually go to a physical store and get that one stitched so this connection between, you know, spending some time in the virtual, in the meta world, but then being able to convert it into physical commerce, um, where's that at? Is that happening? Is that in the future? Oh, uh, so, so there are different estimates. Um, if you take Bloomberg's estimate, you're talking about an $800 billion economy. If you take City, Citibank came up with an even bigger uh, estimate by 2030, they are thinking it's going to go from eight trillion to 13 trillion in, in total commerce size. And all of that is based on this basic assumption. They take the number of people that are immersed in the digital world today and what that number is going to be um, five years from now or eight years from now and how much of e-commerce transaction is happening today. So if people are in love with a certain experience, they visit the theme park, physical theme parks today and they stay at physical resorts, if they are going to start buying digital real estate, which is actually happening, people are buying digital real estate next to a famous artist and next to a virtual arena. So imagine the kind of transactions that are possible. And if you add up all of them, that's where this entire massive market size is coming out of. And it's, it's unbelievable the kind of uh, experiences people are starting to describe. You mentioned Web 3.0 and, you know, some of us unfortunately are old enough to remember Web 1.0 and Web 2.0. And, you know, in some ways, the feeling that we had when we were on the start of the Web 1.0 journey or the start of the Web 2.0 journey, which is you knew that something big was around the corner, but you hadn't quite seen it and experienced it and really started seeing how big it is. It's really the same feeling as well. And I think that's, and, you know, what's interesting is you're obviously, Brajesh, focused on media and entertainment. You do such great work in that, in that part of the business for us. But if I were to sort of abstract out a little bit and look even broader, I mean, think about healthcare and taking your medical records, converting that into an NFT and having that follow you around from physician to doctor to clinic to technician and being able to have all of the records in the right place at the right time that you own, that you control, that you manage, and then be able to provide access to. And, you know, field after field, this, this, this is the this Web3 data is really opening up a whole universe of options that so far were not possible. And so it's just great to be here with you and kind of listen to you talk. But Rajesh, I wanna turn the discussion a little bit away from the possibilities and the opportunities from the greatness that is about to come and the wonders that we're starting to experience. I wanna get down to practicalities of how do we make it happen? So I wanna get involved. I wanna get started. I wanna take my business there. I wanna, I want to be in the metaverse. What do I do? Where do I start? Give me like step one, step two, or give me some sort of a roadmap to how I get there. Yeah, so, so there, there are uh, ways in which uh, if, if you are, let's say, running a media company and you've got a bunch of your assets, the first step is to have the 
clear strategy in terms of what's the broad guidance of revenue, what kind of uh, streams that you're going to tap into. Then this next step is to define. You have to take into account your current assets that you currently have at your disposal, how many of those will turn into virtual assets, and you're going to tap into your existing platforms, uh, all the monetization channels that you have at your disposal. Next is to create, which is where the creation aspect is where you are creating media assets, but instead of human actors and sets and gears, now you're talking about actual programmers and creatives and the design engineers, they are the ones who will create all of your assets. The fourth step is your connection. So you have to connect and ensure that the experience that exists in the virtual world and the real world is seamless. People order stuff in a metaverse and things arrive at their doorstep and the whole experience is seamless. And the last one is commercialization. So all the various uh, channels that traditionally you would, if you had a media asset and you thought of, okay, I'll sell some merchandise on a website and, and maybe have a, a hotel resort. Now you have to think end to end whether subscription or ad-based or merchandise, all the various possibilities that can now happen through NFTs and through the various open deregulated and, and, and all the things that Web3 uh, can do for you, are you prepared to take advantage of it or not? So the five steps that I talked about, those are generic enough that apply to uh, most companies that are in the media and entertainment space, but it can apply to adjacencies as well. And as, as individuals, if you want to buy some NFTs, you know that uh, NBA is already selling its NFTs in the marketplace. You could get into the game. For sure, Brijesh. Look, yeah, I love the way you talk because you simplify this. And I think your five-step process, I think you said strategy, define, create. I think you talked about connection, which is a big thing for me and commercialization, such an important simple but easy framework. Um, I really appreciate the great work you do for us. Um, thank you for your leadership and that. I enjoy the time we spent together. Thank you for being part of this. And if I might ask you to stay on in the LinkedIn part of this discussion, because there's questions, there's inputs, there's feedback that this audience will likely have, I'd love for you to be able to respond to it. Brijesh, thanks for joining. And to my audience, thank you for being part of this today. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Sanjay.